A HMO, also known as a house of multiple occupation, is a method of renting a house out to separate tenants. It's a fantastic method as it's a way of four or five xing the income of one property. Now, speaking as someone who's always invested in single lets, I've always been intrigued to learn a bit more about HMOs. So today I'm here in Coventry to meet an award-winning property investor, Alfred Jaddy. Alfred, welcome to the channel. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming good to on, mate. You yeah, well. good to finally meet. And uh, today we're here to look around one or well, two projects, but one of your HMOs, which is almost finished. Yeah, exactly. So this has been a long one coming. Probably my slowest project, but <laughs> I've got a lot going on this year. So I'll try and obviously give you as much insight as possible to this project and then another one as well. So. Fab. Well, yeah. I said upstairs. Yeah. Um, so as you can see already, a, a lot, a lot of it's pretty much done. It's from finishing touch has been done by the guys. We're probably a week out, I'd say. This is one of the rooms. Um, so this, this is all kitted out? Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, got a four foot bed here, a little kitchen at studio here with fridge freezer um, underneath there as well. Yep. Um, but again, decent sized room, like about, I'd say 11 square meter room. Um, it's got the ensuite, nice. just where you, where you are. Um, do you do them all with like the kitchenettes? So this one, we normally we kind of do half and half. Yeah. Um, but obviously the market, people are kind of wanting the stuff and obviously you can charge the rent. So i.e. a room that hasn't got this kitchen at facility will probably lose £100 easily a month. So if you just buy putting this in, you can, from going, you can go from 550 to 560 depending on the room size, 585 and 700 or even 8750 obviously some of the rooms. Wow. I think the lowest you'll get for a, kitchen, a studio room like this will be 650 Wow, yeah, um, big numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does they, it affect the end value having the kitchenettes? And it does obviously because again, because I'm, I'm doing a commercial mortgage, they are valuing the property based on the rent the property generates. So the more rental I can achieve in the property, the, the higher the valuation is. Um, so hence, yeah. I'm, I'm always trying to, so this property, I think we've got five of the rooms that have got kitchenettes in them, um, and only one that doesn't, so room two. So room two has got access, so technically speaking, room two's kitchen, it's the entire kitchen line, you guys will see <laughs> later on. Um, but again, yeah, just to be able to drive the rents um, as high as possible, because um, this is a six bedroom HMO as well that we've done normally try and push the seven. Um, so I'm still achieving the commercial, just to kind of answer that bit around how you're achieving. Can you get can you get a commercial evaluation on a six bedroom HMO? It's a question people ask a lot. And the trick here is you have to go through planning to get to general planning, which then changes use class, which is C4, use class, which is a technical terminology, but that's what it's called. Um, and that allows you to now change that from a C4 residential into a C general, which is commercial use. And therefore the value cannot, can't now argue with you as it was the post building this because the planning says it's a commercial building now because you now have seven or more occupants. So it's a six bedroom, seven occupants. The loft room is the room that has the um, double occupant room, which is the largest room you see. Well, we might be able to see in there in a sec. Yeah. Um, so obviously I appreciate it. We're still, we're still staging. The house is not done, done yet. But obviously I'll, I'll be dropping the video once it's fully done and the house <laughs> tour. Like even this space here, what would you do with this space? I've got an idea. I, want, I just want to see what, what would you, what would you here straight off the back i'm thinking like little desk spaces yeah okay. or like communal yeah communal workspaces or I something wasn't, okay well, so what was your, what's your thought no i think we, we were just gonna put like uh um, like a large mirror here and then like a shelf something i don't know just just take just to kind of get some beanbag seats or something <laughs> like that something big instagram yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> all the lights they seem to be automatic yeah so obviously exactly. energy crisis well i've been doing this anyways before even the whole energy stuff started but all my HMOs, because they're large properties, bills are a problem, you need to manage that. And obviously one way of managing it is by having these communal sensor lights whereby they go off every, I don't know how many seconds, it doesn't notice anybody around, it goes off. Because um, if not, tenants don't, don't, don't turn lights off. Um, and you're paying the bill. Exactly, all, all <laughs> inclusive. So um, we have other systems in place, Google Nest, so control the temperature of the house when the heating comes off and comes on um, within the house as well. Um, what else do we have? We have coin meters on the washing machines. Again, this is more, we kind of say it's like another income stream in the house, but no, not really. It's more to give the onus on the tenants to manage how they go about washing their stuff as opposed to just, oh, we're going to put a shirt in there and turn the washing for three hours to wash one yeah. single yeah, yeah. t-shirt or whatever. Um, so now they're kind of managing that because they know they've got coins and the coin meter to get it to work. So it might be dark in here, but I just want to quickly show you the large room. Obviously this is um, a bit of an exception because it's a big room. Yeah, what, yeah. What's the average room cost you? Like the last one we were just in. 
What, in terms of uh, refurbishing okay. it? Full refurbishing. Do you have like um, a, a, a rough room? I've never, I've never, because, all right, the way I do things is every house I buy, because I've got the vision of retaining for a long period of time, mm -hmm. we go back to brick. Pl the plumbing, electrics, everything is brand new. Everything you see in this house, plastering, everything's brand new. We don't skip, we don't cut little corners. If we see joists and stuff that are rotten, we replace them. We don't try and patch them up and stuff, because I just, for me, it's longevity over everything. Yes. So in terms of this refurbishment for this project, this is a six bedroom HMO. We spent about 110,000. So if we're not kind of divide by six, um, whatever the number is, but yeah, so 20, okay. 20K, That's yeah. 20K a room. Which um, is... Um, but again, we've kind of gone for some premium stuff, like the, the, the finish, like this, the furnishing for this house was 5,600 for the, the, ward, the wardrobe, the uh, desks, the chest of drawers, the beds you'll see in. Like which are all really nice. Five, yeah. six. Yeah. The kitchen cabinets, pretty much a grand each. Um, obviously ex excluding the fridge. Um, so it, yeah. we were going for the premium spotlights. There's about how many spotlights are in this room alone? <laughs> yeah. There's about 10 in there. So, yeah. so 20 grand can sound excessive for a room. Like this is what, 15 meters square No, room. no. Um, but you'd argue yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit much, but that's including the boiler, new boiler system tank. Yeah, um, whole kitchen yeah, as well, like the so main it's, kitchen. It's, yeah. yeah, so it's hard to kind of say but I normally kind of factor up individual rooms, I don't know, 10 to 50, 10, yeah, 10, 10 grand. I would say to kind of within this room itself yeah. is what I would probably say is, is equating so to So like once you've got the basis of yeah, the room, yeah, it's probably about 10. Uh, I would say, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. But this is a nice size room and talking to someone that's never done a HMO and is an amateur of HMOs, yeah. I assume even though you've done kitchens in most of the bedrooms, apart yes. from one, you yeah. still have to do like a main living room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I kind of do it to kind of, Kill two birds with one stone. So, yes, we have a kitchen facility, but for example, there's not ovens in the in the room, so you start to come down here. You still need to use washing facilities within here as well. Yes. So you're still needing some elements of this of the space here. Um, and for every reason, if you wanted to kind of just chill here, there's, there'll be a TV, like a 50 inch TV there, the sofa behind you. Nice. So you can still kind of chill here, and not always be in your room, because obviously the room aren't they're not big, the biggest rooms. So having a space here, this is probably our smallest communal space we've ever done. Right. Normally. This is probably about, I would say, 18, 20. Yeah. Probably, probably a bit more than that meter squared. Normally, you kind of go to 26 meter squared. So you kind of clearly differentiate the kitchen and then a whole different lounge area. Um, so, yeah. No, it's, it's good. Great, great space. And the finish looks really nice. Do you always use the same builders? Yeah, same builders throughout. Um, we've used um, just kind of get each other rapport there. Yeah. They understand me, I understand them. Easy going. And it's like head builder, and then he has like yeah, yeah. Sub so exactly, subbies. exactly. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I'm not really big on dealing with trades. Um, so I let the the main guys deal with the rest: electrician, plumbers, yes, whoever they need to plasterers, gas guys. Um, so yeah, I don't deal with any individual trades now. Commercial valuation is slightly different in the sense you are literally valuing the property based on the rent it produces. So if you can pr provide that data and the, the, the value agrees with that data, then it doesn't really matter how the property looks. They kind of need to understand what is the intended intended finish. So it's the multiplication of the overall rent. Yeah. So um, if they can, you can justify what the rent is. That's what the end value is. Yeah. yeah they know um, the end value. Obviously, the internet of building is, is is of a good standard, in which they, they even the guy I met, I came late. The guy was like, oh yeah, wait, well, don't worry. I know what you're doing here. High end finish. I can see already. Um, just send me the end pictures when you're done, so I can send it to the bank as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to streamline and get up the bridge. And you know what I mean, start paying the cheap par, yes. <laughs> or not so cheap anymore, but cheaper um, interest rates on, on the on the long term financing. Just before we head over to your next project, which yeah. you're going to show us, yeah. In a quick snippet, do you mind giving like the top line figures of this house? Yeah. Um, so like purchase price. Yeah, I'm trying to remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> next door, our next door. So next door's worth 500 grand on the back end. So I, I already knew my numbers are kind of back end. Yeah. Obviously, next door is a seven bedroom but This is a six bed seven occupant, but the rents aren't too different from the two properties. So I'm still okay. hoping to kind of achieve upwards of 450K on, on the back end on, the, on this one, because it is lesser rent from next door compared to next door. Um, but yeah, so agreed, 245, had to go back to the guys and say, look, oh, I know I just, I said I'll pay it 245, but the valuation's come back at 225. Look, just help me out here. I, I'm still willing to buy it, but I'll buy it at 240. So I think I just, just knocked off five grand um, off the initial agreed price. So I bought it 240, 110, in as a refurb, um, as a refurb, or you think 450? Yeah, 450. Um, it should be upwards of 450 easily. Okay, um, I'll know in a couple of days in a, in a week. Yeah, less. if you bought it, just refurbished it as a normal house and you sold it as like a as a home, what's uh, it, yeah, what's I it don't then? max 300. 
That's interesting. Yeah, because yeah, um, yeah Ma Max, for me, I don't, I don't see it growing for any more than that. Um, it, it may be really done really nice if someone wants to pay it, but this whole area is pretty much like a rental area, so no one's going to pay the premium to be in. So if this house is somewhere else, yeah, maybe they might pay for 50. But it just, that just gives you a competitive advantage against anyone that's looking to do a buy refurbish refinance. Not that they do here, or yeah, a yeah. flip, yeah. because immediately your end value is over yeah, 150k not... more than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you always want to push the valuation. So we just arrived at property number two, and Alfred, you've already told me that you prefer the location of this one, and that you'd always buy in this location if more came up. Is yeah. there a reason you prefer this over the other one? Yeah, because, so, my, my strategy with home invested anyways, I like to, in cities anyways, I like to try and be as close as possible to the station, the town centre, like whatever it is, like where amenities are all available, transport links, um, like, this is literally like, the station is across the road pretty much, right. like, so this is like a prime, prime Coventry um, area. So like anything that comes up here, it's like, it's like gold dust. Like no one, nobody sells on these streets. <laughs> so when they, when they do come up, everyone's just kind of getting in and buy it. Yeah. So obviously this needs full refurb. So if yeah, you yeah. take a look around, you kind of explain the plan. Yeah, this, this is going to be different. Um, okay. But let's just kind of walk around and talk. Yeah, about, yeah, that'd be fab. Um, so this is currently class one. Recently got the planning game, but previous to me buying it, it was offices. Right, so yes. I know it doesn't look like office, but it's not a home. It looks like a home set up to turn into offices. Yeah. These are offices um, which we then had to go through planning to get the permission to convert them to residential. This is my first, first of, first of a lot of things. First office to resi scheme, first buy to let scheme, because there'll be two units in here we'll rent as buy to lets. Right. And then first service accommodation, I'm going to use the other two units. Oh, so, it's like a so, so it's like yes, there's multiple things happening with this, this project. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Strange, um, but team are capable, got a good team around me to be able to deliver on it. That's the most important thing. I'm not the one physically making anything happen. Team are getting, getting instructions from architects, following drawings, blah, blah, build control, making sure we're doing it to regs. So that's the process I am making sure is happening and therefore we get the desired product you want at the back end. Of You're it. just project managing, Pretty getting much. everyone in touch with Pretty each much. other. Yeah. So the good thing is we have the head height kind of, or just about. Um, but we're still gonna dig down, obviously you have to go down and tank the whole place. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of, of trying to do basements, because just getting the tank in, and we all know damp always occurs in the basement. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. You I don't know what tanking system you have, it happens. <laughs> Over a long period of time, water somehow finds its way back in there. Um, so I'm not the most favorite, like, but it is what it is. It's a way to kind of make the scheme still work. So this will be kitchen, living area? No, so, all, yeah, so currently, you can't see the space here. So all this, I don't know what you want to call it. It's going to get dug down. Yeah. There will be like a, a French door on the back. It's hard to imagine all of this now, yeah, but yeah. all of this is going to be coming out. This is all going to be coming out. So this all will be space. Yes, I see um, the space, a bit of the space now, yeah. So it's literally, it's the, it's the same space that we saw in the second room above us. So this is obviously the, the, the ground floor, uh, first room, and then over here is the second room. So that same floor space is what exists below. We just need to dig out all that rubble, uh, what you want to call it. Um, out there, which is going to be a lot of hard work <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. to make happen, but we're going to work on it. Um, but it should be an interesting scheme in the end. Yeah. A lot of space, there's lots of extra space here as well. So all of this... Does that just be knocked through, obviously? Yeah, we'll be knocked through. Uh, we're taking the chimney breast out anyway, so all these all come out. So all of the space okay. will be opened up. So there's a lot There's a lot of space here, literally. This is, yeah, it's this the huge. biggest project, yeah? Yes, yeah, yeah, let's go for, yeah, yeah. The A bed, I, was, I would say, is a similar size to this, but that was still, yeah, not as, I think with flats, because you have different regulations, i.e. soundproof in each unit, we've never had to soundproof um, the HMO rooms. We just, it's just standard. There's not, there's no mandatory requirement. Um, so with flats, yeah, you have to soundproof each room and then do noise tests at the back end to certify each room and that's part of the regulation, so. What was the reason behind doing the different units as opposed to a HMO here? Yeah, so everyone, everyone asked this question. <laughs> so the main reason is because both neighboring properties are flats and I didn't want to go into planning and trying to propose a different scheme to what's already been approved nearby and I kind of wanted to build confidence because I was buying at risk as well. Yeah. And even the previous buyer was trying to get a five bedroom, five one bedroom flat approved 
and the architect, so I didn't even go with my usual architect, I went with the same architect who was trying to get that approved because I just assumed, well, if he started the application and knows what the, lenders, what, what the planners want, let's just tweak the current application to get what we need. You're halfway there, aren't you? Yeah, it? exactly, yeah. and that's what we did. Um, so it's been approved now? Yeah, it's been approved. And I bet you're relieved. Uh, yeah, mate, trust me. <laughs> so like, for example, would you call this level level oh, two? Oh, mate, yeah, I'm literally confused now. Because, because this that is, I mean, it's still on the yeah, first floor, and then that's the second, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I know. guess it's first floor. <laughs> <laughs> this will just be a one bedroom flat. Okay. All, all we're doing is having the kitchen and then the um, bedroom upstairs. So this will be like kitchen and then, sitting room. Yeah. You, um, and is this coming out though? Everything. So I know some people appreciate all these these this old Victorian nice, old tequila oh, place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, and the funny thing as well, like the heritage team yeah. nearly tried to stop us taking out, to taking them out. And I'm like, it's not a listed building. It's not it's not a conservation area. There's no reason why you can tell us why we can't take the tuning breasts. It's yeah. within the property. It's not obviously you want us to keep it, but like Man, listen, you can sell I'm trying to create a modern, that. fashionable house. <laughs> I don't need this old school stuff. Um, but it's good, like, it's like real marble, like, That's I think. That's nice, eh? Like, it's solid, like, looks, looks the parts. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm taking it out. Um, I'm, just, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember the plans. I, if I'm honest, it's a bit bad on me, but, like, this is why I have a team. This is why everyone thinks I'm, like, in the nitty-gritty of the... For me, I'm strictly focused on numbers and just making sure things are happening when they're meant to happen. Okay. I don't really care what pipe, what wire, what... As long as it's clear to my team what needs to be delivered, that's what that matters to me. So I don't need to know the ins and out too much. Um, obviously you have to have knowledge to be able to guide the team. Yeah. So I can't be like dismissive and be like, oh, yeah, my team is there, so they're gonna do everything for me, no. Um, I do take ownership of like making sure things are happening and making sure things are clear, more importantly, and the communication between each, each team so architect, building control, builders, asset manager for the bank, that communicate, You're that loop. To like join it's, the dots. Yeah, really. and that's, that's me and the rest. You, you, architect is an expert on how we're gonna create the room space that we need, making sure it's all functional. That's their job. Builders making sure the stuff is happening. Building control are there to sign up the work that's happening. Asset managers to make sure I get my money back when I obviously go yeah. request a drawdown from the bridging companies. And this, go, this goes back, because I've watched some videos, obviously, of yeah, yourself, yeah. and uh, this goes probably back to the, your job that you went that you used to do, right? Project yeah, management. Project management. I'm, I'm like... It's where your skill set lies. It's like building it, we used to work at engines, and like I don't know how the stuff even comes together and magically starts to work, but yeah. I know enough to be able to direct the team, what we're trying to achieve, what, how, time frame, do you know what I mean? That's the important bit, budget, how much you're spending on the development of this engine. That's all I care about. You technical guys, that's your job. <laughs> you need to worry about the solutions or how I'm gonna make this possible and hit the targets that we need to hit. And that's the effect one paying my team to do. So I'm alleviating some of that, I guess, you might call it mind space mm -hmm. um, and allowing my team to worry about that stuff. That's clever. Um, I think it's the, so, it's the best utilization of your time and your yeah, skills. Yeah, so sorry guys, I don't know every single little detail <laughs> of, of the plans of the house, but stuff still gets done. I've, I've gone on to build a bit of portage, you know what I mean? So it's, it's working clearly, so yeah, um, yeah, can't complain. So this is another room. So this will all be combined with this, yeah, um, and all be one unit, um, plus the obviously the loft up there, and then this this weird room where you have to kind of duck your head down currently um, to get in. But obviously there will be no access in the future to this bit. Okay, it will just be a stairs taking from, you up from from down where that kitchen was supposed to be. I see. Yeah, into into the space. Um, we're gonna open all of this up as well. Um, so it won't look like this. Like a lot of the properties, when they see it, like you can't imagine how the space will be transformed. But it's kind of strange always saying it's it. It's clever, isn't it? It's it's just utilizing space, um, boxing things off, creating stairs, dormers. Uh, so we, there will be a dormer developed window for that loft room there as well. So um, you, so you pay three three two five hundred. Yeah. So you're going out and you're getting a bridging loan for seventy five percent. I think this was quite low leverage. So it was like sixty five or even sixty three. Okay, so then so the, the remaining the rain, yeah. 30 whatever, yeah. is that investor funds? Yeah, yeah. Is that your and, a, and a bit of mine as well. Like it's, it's okay. of everything's kind of, here's like I've run out got rental income from the portfolio. Yes. So whatever money I have around me, and whether the shortfall is, is what I'd raise um, to then put together and go through the deal. So more time nowadays anyways, yes, I'm still raising finance, but I'm also making money as well. So yes. I'm reinvesting everything back into the business. Fantastic, um, yeah. So it's whatever the shortfall is, what I'll go out and raise. If I need to raise money, I'm gonna raise money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So um, that's how I'm currently structuring it. And then for the refurb, which obviously this would probably be a fairly hefty. Obviously I know my team, I think I was kind of budgeting between 150 
to 180, like on the top end. Mm -hmm. So now we're doing a basement, I'm hoping I can save some money maybe, come down to, I don't know, 160 maybe, who knows? But we'll find out in the next few days. Will you go out and get investor finance for the 160? Yeah, so obviously, I don't, just I'll put this again in my story. I could either go out and borrow 160 from an individual, pay them the money, supposed to pay the bridge lenders, or yes. I had the facility from the bridge lenders anyways, and I need about, what, 40, 50 grand? I'll say, call it 40 grand, because it gives 160, 40 grand before chunks. So I'll spend the 40 grand, get the building control guys on here to verify that works okay. The bank then gets their asset manager to check as well. I mean, they, they, they double check everything before releasing money. So yeah, so those two guys will have to come in, be happy with the work that's been done to that stage, and qualify the, the amount of spend okay, up to that point. Fine. Then I get reimbursed the next 40 grand chunk, which then goes into the next however long that lasts for. And then it's just like a cycle. Oh, um, so yeah. yeah, you'll be, so yeah, so it, when brokers say the words, oh, you get 100% development finance for the refurb, strictly speaking, it's not true, or strictly speaking, it's true, but what they don't say is upfront is, by the way, you have to have that initial bit to start. You've got to get a certain yes. stage, and then yeah. they'll release and it. And then they'll release, yeah. reimburse you for whatever spend you've been, you spent up to that point, and then just keep repeating that yeah. till you get to the end. Um, you use a managing agent, right? Yes. Does that work like, like with a single lot? I pay 10% per month, they take that off the rent, they look after it. Yeah, it similar Ex format? exactly, exactly the same. Um, I, I did management from, well, I said I did, I had a management team from day one for my first ever. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of my, I guess I can get, I can share this with your audience as well. So I have five things I look for when I'm, I'm investing in the HMO area, kind of thing I kind of assessed. So for me, obviously management is probably the, there's obviously just five things and all these things kind of interlink and are related to each other. And if one of them isn't, it falls short, it's a no-go zone for me anyways, but I'm gonna share it with, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. share, I'm gonna share with you guys. So we've got good management in place for me. That's also because I don't have time to manage eight tenants. I need to make sure the tenant, the, the people that are, my, are managing my properties know how to vet extremely well to be able to make sure I have a cash flow in property in the back end. Yeah. So very, very important, good management without this, I don't do the deal. Um, council, is the council receptive to HMO conversions? Cool, they are, if not, can't do that, move away. Next area. <laughs> um, um, demographic. The demographic that's going to be living in there, so what kind of demographic for me, it's always been young professional students, is yes. what I really want in the yeah. property. So again, is, does that area provide that? Yes, no, answer that. ROI, ultimately as well, like you're investing in an asset, plus what kind of ROI are you expecting to do for the work you're spending time to do, whatever money you're putting into the project, what's your ROI in that? Um, if that supports your ROI figure, then obviously you invest in there. If it doesn't, go elsewhere. So number five will be demand. Obviously without demand, you can't invest in those areas. If you're intending to put a product out there, which nobody's looking to rent from you, then obviously you'll have no 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 demand and therefore can't provide a product. Possibly, um, well, I mean, they're all very important, but that's a yeah, very so, important Yeah, so one. those, doesn't yeah. so if any of them fall short, for me, it's a no and it's hard. I think investment, you have to not be emotional. You might love the property and all that stuff, but these are all key de determining factors for me to want to invest in there. And if, okay. if literally one of them doesn't work, got to move on. Yeah. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. Oh, well, um, thanks again for coming on, mate. I no appreciate worries, no. all the thanks, value. Thanks, thanks for having provided. me. You came like three hours up here, so I appreciate you coming up here. No, well. mate, I've, I've wanted to meet you for a long time now. Good, now that good, you said good. you're moving to Dubai, or like you're going <laughs> to Dubai for two months, I'm like, I'm glad I got it in before. Cool, so, cool, cool. So, no yeah, worries, no worries at all. It.